Welcome to part one of introductory course in biotechnology. In this unit, we are going to talk about the stage for the action, the cell. In this course, I am going to take you on a journey during which we are going to unravel the secrets of the cell, DNA and proteins. The picture on the left shows lung cells. It is possible to stain cells so that one can take a better look at them under the microscope. Here, different parts of the cells are stained in blue, red and green. Cells are the smallest structure and functional units of an organism. All plants and animals are made of cells. Cells share many common features, yet they can look widely different. For instance, this algae looks very different from the lung cells in the previous slide. Now, like with everything else, some have a lot, some a little. Multicellular organisms have multiple cells and include all species of animals, land plants, most fungi and many algae. Unicellular organisms have just one cell and include bacteria and some algae. So far so good, but how do you get from this to this? Hmm. Any ideas? Well, first and foremost, by a process called cell division. Let's take a look at it. We are looking at the time lapse of cells that are dividing. Take a look at how two cells are formed from one single cell. Remarkable, right? This is the process that mainly formed you as a human, from the fusion of an egg cell of your mother with a sperm cell from your father. To summarize, cell division is the process by which a parent cell divides into two or more daughter cells. Okay, but if cells just divide, you may say, how come that I have skin cells, muscle cells, blood cells, etc.? Well, because a multicellular organism like yourself is also formed by a process of cell differentiation. Let's take a look at it. The process of differentiation happening in the body as an organism develops and maintains itself can be mimicked in the lab. We are looking at beating aggregates of cells five weeks after start of differentiation. This video shows the generation of human heart muscle cells from stem cells. To summarize, cell differentiation is the process of a cell changing from one cell type to another, most commonly from a less specialized type to a more specialized type. Of course, like everything else that is born, cells eventually die. Don't cry! This is a time lapse of cells meeting the final curtain. What you see are prostate cancer cells treated with a chemical, and as they die, they explode into a cascade of apoptotic bodies. Apoptosis is the process of programmed cell death that occurs in multicellular organisms. As we have seen on the films, cells have clearly defined boundaries, until their death, of course. 
This boundary is called the cell membrane. It is not used by cells to hear, but to separate the interior of all cells from the outside environment. It consists of a lipid bilayer with embedded membrane proteins. These membrane proteins allow specific molecules that mediate cellular and extracellular activities to pass between the cell and the outside environment. The main function of the cell membrane is to protect the cell from its surroundings. Like China has its Great Wall, plant cells and most bacteria also have a cell wall. It is a structural layer surrounding cells and located outside the cell membrane. It is composed mainly of the carbohydrate cellulose, which is the most abundant sugar on the planet. That's all good, but a cell isn't just an empty vessel, right? Yes, of course, it includes so-called organelles that carry on its functions. An organelle is a specialized subunit within a cell that has a specific function. Now let's take a look at the organelle that stores DNA, the so-called nucleus. The nucleus is the largest organelle in animal cells. It contains the genetic material in the form of DNA molecules. It is membrane bound, which means it has a membrane. On the picture, you can see a representation of a human cell nucleus. The small holes are the pores of the nucleus. The red dots are the so-called ribosomes, the function of which we are going to go through in the next unit. The DNA is contained in the green structure lining the membrane. It is not organized in chromosomes at the moment, because the cell is not dividing. The ball inside the nucleus is called the nucleolus. Now, there are two main classes of cells. Eukaryotic cells, or cells with nucleus, which include plant cells and animal cells, and prokaryotic cells without nucleus, which include bacteria. The distinction between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is considered to be the most important distinction among groups of organisms. Eukaryotic cells contain membrane-bound organelles, such as the nucleus, while prokaryotic cells do not. Now, just like we breathe, so a cell breathes by a process called respiration. It is carried out in specialized compartments called mitochondrions. Mitochondrions are membrane-bound organelles found in the cytoplasm, the cell substance between the cell membrane and the nucleus of almost all eukaryotic cells. Its primary function is to generate large quantities of energy through the process of respiration. On the left, you can see a picture of two mitochondrions. The image is from a thin section cut through an area of lung tissue. I am sure you all have heard about photosynthesis, which is a process taking place in plant cells. It is carried out in chloroplasts. Let's see. Remember that picture in the beginning with the algae? That algae had a lot of chloroplasts in it, making it bright green. Chloroplasts are organelles found in plants, algae and some bacteria. The main role of chloroplasts is to conduct photosynthesis, where the photosynthetic pigment captures the energy from sunlight, converts it and stores it in the energy storage molecules while freeing oxygen from water. In effect, plants make their own food. We, in contrast, have to eat plants or other animals to get food. Now, let's take a look at a sketch comparing an animal cell and a plant cell. Both have a cytoplasm, a nucleus, 
a cell membrane and mitochondrions. The main differences concern the presence of a cell wall, a vacuole and chloroplasts in the plant cell. Now watch out, there is one single big difference between eukaryotic cells and bacteria that you need to remember. As you can see on the sketch, bacterial cells do not contain membrane-bound organelles, which means no nucleus and no mitochondrions. The blue structure is the bacterial chromosome. The violet structures are ribosomes and the red circles are plasmids. Here is a summary checklist of what we have gone through in this first unit. It takes the form of a comparison list between the three most important cell types to know about, animal cells, plant cells and bacteria. Highlighted in red are the main differences. As we have seen, these include the absence of a nucleus and mitochondrions in bacteria, the presence of a cell wall in plant cells and bacteria, and the presence of a vacuole and chloroplasts in plant cells. Congratulations! You have now completed the first unit of this introductory course in biotechnology.